So um, we can just get started now on our first section. So the first section of the evening is is looking at uh, ways that um, that we can celebrate the community within Sydney, physical symbols and, and ideas. And, and our first guest speaker is someone who really walks the walk when it comes to um, symbols and, and celebration of Sydney's gayness. Like many people, I'd never heard of um, James Gregney before April. Um, but now I wonder how the hell I managed to miss him. Uh, he's possibly the gayest man in Sydney. Um, he lives in Surrey Hills. He, he not only owns but wears a fuchsia sequined um, dinner jacket. He wears it while he's hosting a radio show. Radio, he's wearing sequins. So uh, the man really takes it to heart. Uh, obviously, he's best known though for his work, uh, the DIY rainbow movement. And uh, I'd like you to join me in welcoming James to the stage to talk to us about that movement. Thank you so much, Bernie, and thanks to the Lord Mayor and the City of Sydney for inviting me down tonight. Um, I think it's very exciting. Um, tonight I'm just going to share with you um, the story of what's happened to me in the last couple of months with DIY Rainbow um, in relation to the Rainbow Crossing. And let's do it. Um, when I first started, when I first saw the Rainbow Crossing, um, it was in February with my father Paul, who can't be here tonight because he has a job at the moment. <laughs> my mother's here. Thank you for coming. Um, and we just thought it was absolutely fantastic. I remember we had a coffee um, and walked up to, to Oxford Street. And I said to Dad, oh, there's a, there's a rainbow crossing on the street. We must go see it. And he wasn't really too fussed about the whole thing. But once we got up there, we thought, this is really something special. And I, I really thought it was absolutely fantastic. And credit to the city of Sydney, because it truly was. Um, when I heard the, the, the political ramifications of what was going on and that the crossing perhaps after Mardi Gras was going to be torn down or ripped up, um, I decided it was time to create a global social movement um, to stop that from happening and that was Pot of Gold. Not as successful as I had hoped but I dressed up as a Pot of Gold and I sat at the end of the rainbow and I thought everyone would be also dressing up as pots of gold and we could save the rainbow crossing. Um, unfortunately, we didn't. <laughs> but it was a lot of fun. Um, then, of course, there was the removal of the crossing, which I think was um, the beginning of April, if I'm not mistaken. I was actually hosting one of my radio shows on a community on Northside Radio over in Chapswood. And my friend Denton, who's here tonight, um, was, was at the crossing, and we crossed live to him on the radio show, and he was describing to us the scene there and how sad it was. And it really was very disappointing, um, given, you know, uh, I'd certainly spent Mardi Gras there, um, seeing the crossing, and we just loved it. So the very next day, the Thursday night, was the big one. That is when I decided to chalk up my own crossing behind my terrace on Commonwealth Street in Surrey Hills. And it was a bit of a buzz for me because it was very, very popular on Facebook. Uh, the Newtown Hotel also posted it up and it went everywhere. Um, there was a bit of a call to action on my second post with my sister. Um, we said, this cost me $7. We'd love to see more chalk rainbow crossings popping up all over Sydney. I think, to be fair, someone suggested to me on Twitter that, that would be a great idea after the first photos that went viral. And that was pretty phenomenal. You can see there, 600 people shared, um, hundreds of likes. And I was sort of hoping when I went to bed on that Thursday night, the next day, we'd see some more chalk crossings. And I wasn't sure. And Tiffany Farrington over in Paddington, who's a popular girl, she did one Friday morning. And then um, the rest is sort of history. Um, they started appearing all over Surrey Hills and in the inner city, Newtown here. Um, cute little girl, I think, in Surrey Hills there. This was Redfern on the Friday night. Absolutely fantastic. Um, a little bit dangerous. I hope the police aren't too worried tonight, but the movement sort of died down a bit now. Um, families got into it over the weekend, and um, it was just so, for, for, for me, you know, I don't take credit for just sparking it, not the whole thing, or I didn't really chalk anything myself, but it was very exciting seeing regional Australia families, everyone getting together and celebrating 
um, the premature end to the rainbow crossing. And it was obviously something a bit more about marriage equality and equality generally. This is in the first week. So in the first seven days on Facebook, on the Facebook page, we had 18,000 people like the page, which is a lot. Um, we had about 450,000 plus people um, seeing some sort of a chalk rainbow in their news feed um, during that period, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, I was sort of, I manage social media sometimes, but with this particular one, they say, you know, um, I'm sure your experts clever would tell you, never do more than two posts a day or something. And we were just getting so many pictures in, we were posting rainbows, I think, every five minutes. And in the first weekend, people loved it. <laughs> Um, anyway, we had so many pictures at that point in time, um, we made a video, so I'd like to share that with you now, if that's alright. Sharing and connecting with your community. 
and I think it's really important. This is the John Lennon Memorial in Central Park in New York, and a guy had found the page and he went down there and rainbowed up that memorial, which, you know, I'm a big fan of imagine arts and stuff, and it's incredible. Uh, London, someone did the London Eye as well in front of there, and the UK absolutely loved it. This, I believe, is Thailand. Um, I, I love some of the foreign ones, I love how they do them in their own little Thailand way. Uh, this is Fiji, and we're actually on the news in Fiji as well, and someone sent me the video, which was quite humorous and interesting. This is what they call rainbow chalking. It's happening all over in Australia. It's, a, it's very cool. Um, Amsterdam, and th this is actually a lovely story. This is the Gosford Police Station, and the locals there asked the Gosford Police if they could chalk up all around the police station, and they let them do it. And in fact, the police joined in with them to do it, and they had a great day to be in together. It was really, really beautiful. I think the, uh, the constable and sergeant came out the end of the day and gave a little talk to everyone. And the community just really connected with each other. It was just fabulous. And then now we're seeing the marriage equality rallies, people at DIY rainbowing at the rallies. I believe this one's down in Melbourne, which looks phenomenal. Just something to do when you're at a rally, isn't it? It's, 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 all that standing around. Um, this is in Manhattan. Go ahead and go. This is in Vietnam, which was fantastic seeing that one. This is down in Canberra. In fact, by the end of the day, they had done the whole foreshore there, full of chalk. Um, I think they totally depleted all the chalk stocks in Canberra. Um, this is a lovely couple in Zurich that sent us an email. And this is somewhere on the Australian coast. Beautiful, beautiful shot. This is actually on Anzac Day back in April. Someone had done a DIY rainbow, I think, near Kira Lee. I don't know if you can see it on the shot there. Let's get there on the screens. Um, and the council actually decided to leave the chalkings there um, for the Anzac Day ceremony, which I think is really lovely. And so all the guys marched over the crossing um, during the memorial time there. So it was great. And this is a cute one in Hunter Valley. And that's Matthew Mitchum. What's a gay community forum without doing Matthew Mitchum? He did one there in the Institute of Sport. And this is a lovely lady called Kate Wake who joins us tonight. She's just over here at table number six. Hi, Kate. Kate is the pioneer of the Summer Hill Rainbow Crossing. I don't know if you guys know much of the story, but she um, first instigated her own DIY rainbow at Summer Hill. And very quickly, the council came by Ashfield Council came by and hosed it off, and there was a bit of a, um, a kerfuffle on Facebook about it, and we were all Facebooking and tweeting about it, and eventually she got, was it a $5 permit, Kate? Well, she eventually got a $5 permit out of the council so that she could do her crossing. And then, um, just recently, a month or two ago, the council had just voted to create a permanent rainbow crossing there at Summer Hill. So it's just truly remarkable, Kate. Well done. Uh, and then this is the original um, crossing space that was chalked up during the Sydney Marriage Equality Rally, which I think is just fantastic. I don't think we did the lines as well as you guys did, Clover, but we tried our best. <laughs> Very cool. Um, just before I finish, I just wanted to share a few words about what we're doing tonight, what we're talking about, creating a, a symbol um, to celebrate the GLBT community at Taylor Square and in Sydney. And um, the importance of symbolism and things like this, people think sometimes these things can be quite um, superficial, but they're not. And I just wanted to share um, with you guys four of really poignant posts that I got on the Facebook page over the last couple of months. Um, or maybe five. This is, um, this, is a, this is a kid in Shanghai who's living in rubble with his family and the Chinese government have um, knocked down their house to be put in high-rise buildings and they've been told to move but they're not moving yet. And some expats gave them some chalk and they chalked up a really cute rainbow in front of um, some rubble basically, which I thought was really cool. Um, this is, um, I've got a message from these guys. Um, from New Hope for Cambodian children, we're an orphanage in Cambodia. All of our 240 children have HIV. We are proud to support DIY Rainbow. It's really, really great. 
This one was from Virginia. Um, Hello, wonderful people. I work in a women's shelter in Virginia, USA. I have some wonderful ladies here, straight and gay, that want to participate. So we made a rainbow here. Because of the nature of the work, we can't post it um, on your wall with our names or faces, but they wanted to see it on there. Thank you. I think it's fantastic. Um, this one was really, really um, deep. This is from a girl called Nicole. This is the grave of my 19-year-old brother, James, who took his own life in February this year. During Easter, I decorated his grave with colourful chalk and Easter eggs, as we have not added a plaque just yet. There is a special rainbow in the top left of the photo because we found out after he died that he was struggling with being gay and felt that there was too much hate in this world to come out. After much consideration, I thought I should share this message with all of you to show you that if our support can be shown to people like him through things like DIY rainbows and other displays of love and acceptance, it could make so much difference. Thank you, Nicole. Which, um, yeah, speaks for itself. And finally, a nice one. This is a beautiful girl called Angel. This is my rainbow crossing. Yes, I know it doesn't look that much of a crossing. Anyways, the past year I've been openly gay and it's been the best year. For years I was hiding who I really was for the fact I was already being bullied by kids at school, telling me I was a lesbian and I looked like a dyke. And there were always kids laughing at me. I hated myself and I thought that no one would ever accept me for who I truly was. But as soon as I came out, my life suddenly turned around and I, suddenly, I was suddenly happy and I finally felt comfortable with myself and I actually started liking who I was. And even today, I'm still as happy as anything. Angel. So I think what we're doing now, coming up with some great ideas to perhaps um, instigate Taylor Square, really will have uh, follow-on effects. Symbols have follow-on effects and it's really, really important. Thank you so much for letting me share some of that with you tonight, guys.